This video is the first video um, on a rebuild of a uh, 4.3 liter V6 Vortec engine, uh, specifically for marine use. Um, the block is clean and ready to go. It's on an engine stand. Uh, apologize for the poor lighting in here, but it's uh, late at night in my shop. But anyway, um, so the block's ready to be uh, assembled. And uh, if you get it, this if you uh, build your own engine. Typically, you'll get it back from machine shop cleaned with the uh, freeze plug, excuse me, the uh, can bearings installed, the freeze plugs installed here, here, the oil galley plugs installed uh, right there and right there, and then also two on the back. Um, so the, the block will be ready for assembly. Um, over here, I got a freeze plug here, a freeze plug here. Now, this block uh, wasn't in bad, that bad of shape, so I didn't take it to a machine shop to have it machined or cleaned or anything since it was in great shape. But um, this would be a drain plug for the, you don't have to fill that one in now, but I'll go in later. Um, so there, and also on the other side, there's a drain plug on the block right here. So anyway, the block's ready to be assembled, and um, I'm about to start doing that. Um, so right now the block's upside down on my engine stand, ready for the crankshaft. The crankshaft is here. Um, it's been uh, machined and saved by a machine shop. If you look at the front of it, it says uh, BAP, that stands for Benny Auto Parts. And it's got two yellow hash marks right there, indicating that the rods have been turned 20. And there's another yellow mark somewhere on the mains. Um, so you can get this thing tilted up. It's kind of heavy. So, um, yeah, okay. So that means that right there is for the mains. That means this the main bearings have been turned down 20 thousandths. And these two marks here mean that the rod bearings or the rod journals have been turned down 20 thousandths. So, so this crank has been saved by machining because it was uh, it had spun two bearings, both a rod bearing and a main bearing, and messed it up. But it's been repaired. So the bearings I'm going to use are sealed power. They're uh, part number 5085 M20. M20 means mains turn 20 down, turn 20 thousandths undersized. And uh, so this particular part number, if you look it up, means these bearings are called tri-metal. They're the best bearings you can buy for a, a heavy duty motor. They make aluminum bearings called bimetal, which are not quite as strong. Uh, they're huge. They're, they're used, there's an LS block there, and they were used, the factory used it, uh, bimetal aluminum bearings in that engine. But I personally, I think, you know, Build a motor, you got to use the best you can get. So the, the price of these is only about 40 bucks for the whole set. So that's the bearings I'm going to use. Um, like I say, the block's been clean, the crank's been clean, and here's the main caps that go on. They have not been clean. I will clean them one at a time individually as I use them and put this thing together. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the, the bearings out of the box and put the uh, what's called the uh, the block side of the bearing goes into these these little um, I'm not sure what these are called. Um, cubby holes here, 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 and here. So your your block shell, the the block side of the bearing goes in there. And then once you let, lay all those in, then you set the crank in place. And by the way, you, you start off by putting the crank in dry. Don't put any oil on the bearings. You set it in very gently on dry bearings, and you do not spin it. And then what you do is you put the other bearing half in the uh, cap. These are called your main bearing caps. This is the back one for your, um, this is your thrust bearing main cap, and then these are the rest of them. There's four of them total. And you do not spin, you put the other half of the bearing in the caps, put them on one at a time, torque them down, and you chest, you chest, you test the clearance. Now, if you trust a machine shop to do a great job and everything goes fine, you may not want to do this step, but I always do it anyway. It's real easy to do and fast. So to check the clearance of your bearing, you use a product called Plastic Gauge. I'm trying to see where it says, so right there. This is Plastic Gauge MPG-1. And what, basically it's like a little piece of fishing line. It's a piece of wax string, and you cut it and you lay it, I'll show a video on how to do this, but you lay it across, and then you put the bearing on and torque it down uh, without spinning it, and then you disassemble it. And the, the amount that the plastic or the wax string has been squeezed, how wide it is, tells you what the clearance is. You just compare it to these, these uh, colored bands on here and the width of the uh, compressed or smashed wax string tells you what your clearance is in thousandths of an inch. 
So uh, to find out what the clearance should be, you go just find a reference manual of these engines and look it up. So I'll, I'll show you that too. But so um, now that I've talked about it, I'm about to uh, put the crank in, or first I'm gonna unbox the bearings, put the bearings in, lay the crank in, put some plastic gauge on, put a, put a bearing cap on it, torque it down, and, <coughs> excuse me, um, torque the bearing cap down, and then uh, remove it and check the clearance with a plastic gauge. So what I do is I do each bearing one at a time. I'll do the front one, the next one, the next one, and the back one, back one, all individually one at a time. And then if they all check out, then I'll do it all again and do all four at the same time. And I do that for, there's a reason I do that. The reason I do that is to find out if the crank is bent. So if you do all four, by the way, when you do each one, you write down the results for each one individually. Then you do all four of them again all at the same time and check the plastic gauge on all four of them and you hopefully have the same reading with all four of them as you do with one of them if you don't have the same reading with all four of them then your crank is possibly bent so uh, the machine shop's supposed to fix that for you but again machine shops make mistakes so it's better to check, check behind them than, than not check it so that's what i'm about to do and uh, i'll uh, Make a more video as I go along as to, to the important steps that I saw where I think you need to see the process. Sorry, it's a little bit late at night, so I'm kind of half out of it, but um, I want to get this done. So stay tuned, and I'll uh, show you some more as I go along with this rebuild. Okay, I'm about to install the bearing shells in the block, and I just want to show you a quick thing. So when you take the bearing out of the box, uh, it may have some discoloration on it. That's normal. Don't worry about it. Just take a shop rag just or a shop towel like I just did and just wipe the dust and any kind of manufacturing crud off of it. Um, should be pretty clean, but just kind of dust it off, wipe it off on both sides and then also inside here. This side especially needs to be clean because that has the seat very closely inside the block. So if you notice, the bearing has that little, uh, little tang right there, uh, right here by my finger, right there. That fits in a little groove in the block. So, and this is the side that this is the bearing shell that has the groove in it. That's the side that goes in the block. So, if you notice right here, there's a little tang or there's a little uh, notch for the for the tang. So, what you do is you put the bearing in like this. You set it in the hole, right about there. I'm trying to do this with one hand, and you just kind of push it down in there. Let's see if I can get this thing good. Not damaging it. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work this in or make sure it's okay before I continue. I'm gonna stop the video and then I'll start it when I get it in there. Okay, I just want to show you what I ran into. If you see that shiny part right there by my finger, it's right in right there here. There was a little bit of a burr sticking off the side of the bearing where it wouldn't really go down in the in the uh, on the a little cubby hole or valley, I'm gonna call it on the block. Um, so I had to take a pocket knife. You can see where I kind of shaved some material off right there uh, around this edge right through here. So I had to take a pocket knife and shave off the burr to get this thing to fit down in there. So now I've shaved that off, it, it goes down in. I'm gonna put it install or install it, push it in, and then I'll show you a video how it looks when it's finally installed. All right, the bearing shell is now installed in the block. And you can see how I got the uh, little tab on the bearing lined up with the notch in the block there on that side. Also notice the oil hole right here. It must line up with these holes in the block. Um, there's one under that. I didn't show you, but there's a hole that lines up with that hole right there in the bearing. That's what feeds this bearing with oil. Um, the bearing is now seated in the block. Don't be alarmed if you see the, the block. The uh, bearing seems to stick up past the edge just a tiny bit. Um, that's called crush when you uh, compress these two bearing halves together they uh, compress into each other a little bit it's called bearing crush and uh, it helps to keep them from rotating so um, the first shell is in I'm now going to put the other three in and uh, I'm not going to show those individually I'm just going to put them in there by the way you don't force the bearing you get it in there um, you put when, you put, when I put this in, I put this edge here as close to the edge of that as I could and then work the bearing down into the into the uh, little half moon or half circle part of the block uh, without forcing it. 
The very last bit, I had to push on it just a little bit, but you don't want to push on the bearing to the point where it bends it. If you're having to force it, something's wrong, let's take it back out and figure out what the problem is. Make sure there's no burrs on the bearing. Make sure but the block half, the block, the block surface and the bearing back surface are smooth when you put it in there. No grit, no dust, nothing. So first bearing shells in, I'm gonna do the other three, and then I'm gonna set the crank in. Uh, the next video will probably show the crank sitting in the bearing because once I get these shells in, I'm going to lay it in place very easily. Okay, um, all the bearing shells are now in, uh, at least the, on the block side. Uh, there's four bearing shells that are now placed in the, in the block, and I'm about to set the crankshaft inside the uh, shells without spinning it. You lower it down gently, and you do not spin the crankshaft. Um, what I found it easiest to do was to insert this side first, line it up this little tang with the notch in the block, and get that lined up. Put these two sides flush right here, as close as flush you can get them. And then this side, just work it down in once this side over here is flush. And then as I gently push this down, the whole bearing went flush with the block. So I put this inside first to, to line up so that I can line up this tang, and then this side pressed in easier. So that's how I did it. Um, so, once again, I'm going to set the crank in here, and I'll show you how to do that. Or I'll show you a video once that's done. Alright, the crank is now laid in place, and I say one little problem I want to fix, but uh, the first I didn't want to go in, this back bearing is called your thrust bearing right here, because the two bearing faces uh, rest not only here, but also on the sides. So it's a little bit crooked, but I finally got it to drop in. So you just got to be gent very gently wiggle it up and down to make it uh, to get the crank to uh, not drop in place, but set down in place. So the crank's installed. Um, to do plastic gauge, you can't plastic gauge over a hole. So this this oil hole here is around on the top. I'm gonna have to move it. I'm gonna have to. I said don't rotate the crank. So what I'm gonna do is pick the crank back up, rotate it up in the air, and gently lower it back down. So that I don't, so I have a flat surface like this across the, you know, on the top, all the way across. You see, there's a hole there. I can't use that one. That one's not. That was okay. The hole off the side, but I'm gonna rotate a little bit, and that that one's okay. So I'm about to rotate this crank so I can do plastic gauge on it. Um, the next video I'll show, I'll show how I cut the plastic gauge, put it on the bearing right before I put the cap on it.